Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through a step-by-step -step simple process for a very basic structured live stream. It's gonna show you how to create a countdown timer screen with the music assigned to it, transition to yourself on screen just like this, and then also have where you can bring on guests and have them on the screen or to share screens and do commentary over websites and things and such, and then have your final end screen of show all in this module, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in Ecamm Live. I'm gonna be walking you through step-by-step -step of how we're going to build each individual scene. We're gonna start off in a very sequential order with the Just Me screen, which is already there. Most of the time when you create a new scene, it's already ready for you to go. But we do wanna start this off by being very organized by clicking on this symbol here so we can make sure that we're starting off with a new folder. We'll go ahead and call this Ecamm Simplified. And then if we just click out of that box or click to something else, then it will go ahead and save. I wanna go ahead and hit this drop down arrow so that as I add things to the scene, I'll be able to see exactly what my various scenes are, which will be four. And then it makes it easier to navigate, easy to collapse and add on or remove as you see fit. So the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and hit that plus symbol down here that will add a new scene. And because this one's pretty much already ready to go when it comes to having a just me or just me on the camera scene, I'll go ahead and type this one as just me. And then I'll go ahead and click again for our countdown timer, which is gonna be our first one here. So that way we have this ready to go. So the cool thing once you have this added in is that you can drag and drop these as you see fit and it'll stay nestled within the folder. Now there's a couple different things when it comes to the way that your overall scene operates and function. Right now you see me on the screen because the camera source is my main camera. But because we, in this instance, don't want to be on camera, you can choose to if you want. I wanna change this to a blank scene so that there's nothing on the screen as well. Now you can change this to a screen share or a video file of your choosing, but for this purpose, we're going to click blank. So now you can't see anything here. So let's go ahead and start off by adding in an actual image for our countdown timer. Now you'll notice there's three sections here in the overlays, which is showing all scenes, showing the current scene or show in the background. Now we could add this to show in the background and it would be fine, but we would see this across multiple scenes and we literally only want it for this one. So we're gonna click here to show in the current scene only. The way that we know this is perfectly visible is by hitting the eyeball and it makes it visible or it hides it. And when you wanna lock this scene in place because we can you know, minimize and increase it, that's just by literally me clicking on the image and adjusting the scroll wheel to fill it out completely. And once it's at the size that we want, we hit lock. The next thing we can do is literally add the countdown timer. We already have this natively built into Ecamm, so you can just click on these numbers here and this will pull up a menu for you. We do have different options where you can literally access your entire fonts here couple different things that you can do, which is add a background image so that it's white or whatever color you choose. If you need to choose a color option here for the background, whatever color box is next or closest to it, that's what you wanna choose. So if we wanted to choose the way that the background color was, we could literally go over any of the spectrum. So we could leave this that way. I don't want to use any background, so I'll just leave this unchecked. But when you do have it checked, you can choose to do squircles or partial boxes, partial squares, partial circles, and adjust the roundness here by adjusting the slider. And that will make it either a fine point or bring it all the way so it's round. When it comes to the margin, you can increase how much of that box you actually see or how much is around the text. I found that something about here is pretty good when it comes to the border, you can choose to make this however you want, however thick or however thin that you want to. And literally you can do this all in Ecamm. Any kind of effect that you want on the actual font, you can choose to add a shadow or a light glow. And if you want to adjust the color of that glow, you can click on this image box color box here, but we don't want to do that. So we'll deselect that and deselect the background. And let's just say uh, we want to keep this pink. If we want to adjust the font size, we can move here and then click on add if we want to add this to our scene now because so much of this is drag and drop you can adjust the corners here to make this bigger or to make it smaller to fit wherever you want now if this is all that you want to do you can lock this in place here and literally that's your countdown timer but if we double click on these numbers again or we can hit this pencil tool here then when this countdown timer is finished we can decide what happens next by clicking go to the next scene when this number is finished counting down we also have different options of how we want this to operate. Count down to a specific date and time. Count down to a specific clock. 
or use this as a stopwatch. For now, we'll leave this at 10 minutes and we'll leave this and click save here. Now, this is pretty much okay, but this is your basic scenes here for a basic countdown timer. And if that's literally all that you wanted to do, then that's fine. But in my opinion, I think for the power that you signed up for, which is Ecamm Live, I think that's a little bit boring. So I think we can make that so much better. So let's go to, let's say a level two when it comes to a countdown timer. So instead of just having a number here, we'll go ahead and hide that number. And then instead of just having an image here, we're going to get rid of that and delete it. When it comes to images or video, I highly encourage you to stick with something that's very subtle and not jarring. Now, this is a video clip that I'm pulling in and we'll have two options here, which is added as an animated overlay, which there will be no audio and play it full screen with audio. If there is music to it, you can choose that, but we're just going to pick add an animated overlay here. Now this is very, very small. This is not what we want, but we do want to slide it around until we get this perfectly centered. There we are. And we'll see that snap come in and then you can just take the scroll wheel or pinch and zoom so that that fully goes all the way out. We'll hit the lock symbol there and then we'll go ahead and hit reveal so that our countdown timer comes available. Let's unlock it so we can move it around. And then we're going to find that center again, just by sliding here. And if you want this to be a little bit bigger, you can, and then just slightly recenter that here. And then this is pretty good, but if you notice the motion stopped moving around, so we want to adjust this. This is going to be for this image here. Let's click on this arrow. We can say hide it when it's done, or we can choose to stay hidden. Let's say if we were doing a specific effect, I'll show you that later on. Let's just click loop because we just want that video to subtly keep moving and keep playing. Let's hit play on that again so that as it's going through, just auto play and just keep looping over and over and over again. So these clips don't have to be long. This one's literally only a few seconds. So this will take us along the bit as we need to. The next thing that we want to do is make this a little bit more dynamic and let's add some music because right now you can hear me, but ultimately you may want to be muted. So that means coming over here to mute our main microphone. But before we do that, let's go ahead and click a new folder so that we can create some music and we'll hit that folder button here. And we're just going to call this Ecamm simplified as well. Keep it consistent. And then we can hit the drop down arrow. So anything that we add here, which is going to be just fine. Let's click out of this box so that that saves. Okay. Awesome. Now let's just drag and drop the music file that we want to use and we'll nestle this underneath the folder here. So now we have a music track added, but to make sure that it's going to play, we'll just need to either hit the play button there and then you'll be able to adjust the volume levels. So we can dress this slider here to bring the overall music folder louder or softer. But if we just want to adjust the volume for this file here, we can click on the gear window and that we have a dedicated slider that can control the volume of that individual track. If we want this track to loop. We can hit this button here. For those of you coming from the CD days, you already recognize that symbol, but we're not quite done yet. Let's go ahead and hit pause here. We want to make sure that as we're playing this song, it's only for this scene. Now, if you want it to carry over, then you can definitely do that. Um, you don't need to do this next step then, but if you want it to only be dedicated to the intro, what we want to do is click on the gear, add to scene, and then we'll see that this becomes available here. We've added our timer so that when this timer is over, we need to select, go to the next scene when finished. Let's hit save there. So when this 10 minute countdown timer is over, it will go to the next scene. But this is only a two minute and 32 second track. So let's adjust the time and then we'll go and change that to two minutes and 32 seconds and hit save. So now exactly when this song is finished, it will automatically go to the next scene, which will be just me on screen. But I'll change this timer down to just a few seconds just so we can demonstrate how this actually works. Now, as soon as these few seconds are over, we're automatically going to transition to the next scene and this individual song won't be here. And you notice how that went ahead and faded out and it went ahead and disappeared for us. You can do that with Ecamm or if you don't want to attach it to a specific scene, then you can uncheck that option here. Let's go back for just a second. We'll pause our dedicated transition here. Come back up here to the gear and see where it says like add to scene, we wouldn't do that. So if you want to take that off, you just click here to X. 
Now you can play the music if you want by just hitting the play button here. And that will play. So as you go from one scene to the other, the music actually continues. So sometimes I like to continue the music. Sometimes I like for it to be finished. So that is a preference that you have here. For most people, they may just want it to be attached to the scene and just go from there. But let's go ahead into our third scene on building out this simple setup. To create our third scene in this setup, we want to go ahead and start with a new scene by hitting this plus symbol here. And we'll name this screen share and the same rules apply depending on how we want to do this. But I want to go ahead and start this off with the source to blank and drag this into the background, something a little bit different and make sure it's completely full. And we will go ahead and lock that. Then we can come down here to our camera source and select that. And then we have our actual camera source available. And for me, that's the cam link 4k. Now, the really cool thing here is the fact that we can hit this pencil tool. We can adjust the shape or the framing of that. So if you wanted to have it in a squircle shape, then we can add that by extending that out a little bit here. Or we can choose by clicking on this pencil tool here again, we can choose to have a custom. And so that will allow us to adjust or readjust any shape that we see fit, which is really, really neat. Hitting this pencil tool again, we can adjust which sides have a point to it similar to other ones that we were using. So whatever you prefer, play around with this. You can have a ton of fun. Same thing with the corner radius, how sharp or how rounded you want things to be. And so for me, I actually li I like it to have a point on each side there, something like that. The border for me right now is at 13. That seems to be normal. Or if you want it like really borderized, if you will, then we could just keep it really, really simple. So if you notice that as we're going through and trying to design things, you'll have different overlays that are kind of on screen and kind of getting in the way of the design. Now, what you can do is come up here to the help window and type in a specific keyword like hide. And you'll notice that even if just as you hover over it, it's like hide Ecamm Live, hide others. And we don't want to do that. We just want to hide the main controls. And there is a shortcut for this that would be your command and this symbol that is kind of like an accent here. And you notice those icons are gone. Anything that you clicked on record or whatever is still available. And when you're ready to go back, hit command and that accent icon and that comes back or you can come back up here to help and select that function again. And that will work for you for now. We'll leave these off the screen so that you can see as we're designing this here. And let's say that this is fine. The next thing that we want to do here is we'll come over here to add on a window or add in a screen share. If we click this computer with a plus symbol here, this will be our screen share window. And this can now function however you choose to it. We'll hit this pencil tool to start designing this out a little bit. Because it's a certain shape, you can choose to have it be the primary or the secondary display if you're using multiple monitors. Classic, square, round, squircle, tall, or a custom. We'll choose custom for the purposes of this video. And that will crop in on your image. So be aware of that. There's a lot of custom tools and custom fun function buttons that you can use within Ecamm. Just go ahead and make sure you get the PDF on some of the most commonly used ones in Ecamm. Now I can resize this so that I'm a little bit smaller and then we can make this a little more frame dominant. But once it kind of locks into frame, that safe image area, it's not trying to let me proceed over. I can hit the command button on my keyboard and now I can move all the way over if I want it to be off the frame or not. So I can move a little bit more freely if you choose to, but it is saying like frame suggestions like, hey, be careful, you wanna keep things within this bordered box. Let's go ahead and act as if we were going to use this same type of setup, but we wanted to do it with a guest. So let's go ahead and duplicate so we can keep most of what we have. And that is gonna be this scene here. And we'll call this like an optional one. So let's just call this a guest scene. And I like to keep it with very, very, very functional names. So I'm just gonna click plus, one guest. So I know it's only me and one other person. doesn't look like I changed anything, but we'll go ahead and bring this overlays back up for our Ecamm live guest interview feature. You will get so many hours that is available to you. You can always purchase more and you'll see this two people together icon and this will bring up this interview panel. When somebody calls in and to get access to saying guest one, two and three and four placeholders, you'll need to be able to turn this on. If it's turned to off, we come over here and click this pencil tool again. 
for example, actually, we can hit the gear window here. That's a little bit better. Then when we click here, you'll see it's just back to the Camlink 4K and not guess one, two, three, four. So we do want to make sure that that is enabled first. Let's go ahead and resize ourselves, and let's use, let's say about that feels about right. Let's get the icons off the screen. So to make space for two people, what I want to do is like, let's say resize this a bit here and I can hit option and hold it and slide this over to duplicate that scene. Let's say I want one to be myself and one to be a guest. And so make sure we are both centered here. Alrighty. So that way we're both about the same height, but equally taking up the same amount of space. But I want this to be for one guest. So I'm gonna click on this pencil tool here for this second shot. I'm gonna change this to guest number one. And so now if I want it to go from the just me on the screen type of a scene setup to myself plus a guest, this is now available. But let's go back up here to our screen share. Let's say we want to bring them into the fun as well. What I'm going to do is now that I have the screen share scene selected, I'm going to hit the duplicate on this and we won't have to do as much. So we'll say plus one screen share. All righty. Now we have ourselves locked. Let's go ahead and unlock this. Let's adjust the camera framing so that we are a little bit smaller, something like this here and drag down to duplicate ourselves. And let's go ahead and bring this in a smidge. We're also gonna change this and guest one. So now we have a scene that is set up just for us, just for us with a screen share if nobody else is joining. And we have a plus one screen share if it's two people. And then we also have a scene set up that is for ourselves as well as when we bring somebody else on. But this is not very organized. This is not the best way to utilize Ecamm just to have a bunch of scenes floating about. So what we wanna do now is create subfolders that make more sense. So let me go up here to actually hit the folder and we'll say plus one guest. And we'll drag this, I'll say about there. And so let me hit that kernel to go downward. Stu plus one guest should be in this folder. And then plus one screen share should be in that folder. So now with it being collapsed, let's rename that. Call that plus one guest. And then come back to the just me. And pull that up here. So now things are progressing in a way that makes more sense. So if we don't have any guests available, we are not having to look at extra scenes that are not relevant for what we're trying to do for that particular show or live stream. So we can go from the countdown timer to just us on screen. Let's say you have an impromptu guest that wants to join or something like that. Then you can say awesome when they call in. And we now have this set up for one person with the screen share and then one person with the guest scene. Typically, we're going to rearrange this to the plus one guest scene first. The reason why we want this one to be first is because before you bring them into a screen share or doing anything else, you generally are going to bring them on camera and talk for a little bit. So we want to bring them on and have them fill in this spot here. And you can continuously build this out for multiple guests. If you need to go up to more than four, then you can start to use Skype. But that's later when we get into specifically the Ecamm interview functions. And then after you've been talking for some time, you may transition to a screen share option to say, hey, here are some of the things that we're trying to do. Here's what we're looking at on the site and on and on so that that thing is filled in. But come back here to the just me. And so we've built out a very competent type of a scene that works really, really well. And so we have our countdown timer and not only did we build for ourselves, but we've added on just in case we bring on another guest and you can duplicate those folders, make seats for individual people and adjust things there as you see fit. But let's get into our final scene, which is now saying goodbye and wrapping up the show. So now we're gonna go ahead and progress on into our final scene. And we can do that by hitting on these two boxes to duplicate. And we'll call this the end of show. So that way we're very clear on when we're pressing that exactly what's going to happen. 
And we're going to drag this underneath the plus one guest folder, but not within the folder. We want to make sure that the, as things are progressing on, we're good to go. And so our show is now in a sequential order that honestly makes a whole lot of sense. So to start things off, we want to make sure that we ourselves are not on the screen. So we'll go to source and select that as blank. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and drag and drop into the current scene area. Let's say we want to use an image, something that is fun, vibrant and maintaining the energy. Let's go ahead and click on the T symbol here in the overlays to bring up a text. And then we can click the add symbol here. And so we can bring this up to center this a little bit just to find it. Let's go ahead and take the icons off the screen so we can see a little bit better. And I like to use things that are good for contrast. So it's a little bit easier to see. And if you want, you can change the color of the font or anything like that. Just double click back on that. And then if we highlight this text, we can choose if we want it to have a shadow or a glow similar to previously before. And the other thing we can also choose if we want this to have a background. So let's say we want this to be a darker color image, but instead of that being all the way black, we can honestly, let's go up here to the background color. And we'll go ahead and adjust that opacity. You can bring that down so that it is not as uh, dark as a full on black if you prefer. And then let's hit exit out of that. Hit save to save our effects. And then you can adjust this here. So the song we're gonna bring in, we're gonna drag it into our folder up here. And this now we can hit the gear similar to the one we did for the intro and click add to the scene. And so that way now it's playing. Bring that down just a smidge while we're talking here. And so as we're now going from one scene to the next, we can choose to have music here, but maybe you do not want your audience to hear you talking when you're on the scene. So we'll hit mute. This is what it looks like when you end a show exactly as you created it. And I'll see you in the next scene.